And, uh, but then, if we start looking at individual population comparisons, the first thing that really stands out is that Johnson Atoll, which as I said is about a thousand kilometers uh, southwest of the Hawaiian Islands, shows no difference from any populations in the archipelago. Meaning that on this evolutionary scale through the mtDNA, that we do have regular exchange between the Hawaiian Islands and Johnson Atoll. Of lar we have regular exchange of larvae over this distance. And then if we look at population comparisons within the center of the archipelago, again, we have no significant difference among these populations. Meaning that you know, at the scale of uh, mtDNA analyses, we do have larval exchange occurring regularly throughout this region. It is only when we start, occurring, uh, start examining populations that are beyond that region, uh, for example, when we compare Midway to uh, Maui Nui sites, we end up sh seeing significant differences among populations. So it looks as if while on this scale, which is probably a, is about 1,000 or greater kilometers, we do have very good mixing. As soon as we get beyond that, we have a signature of genetic differentiation of these populations. But what's really interesting is that while at this scale, we have an FST of 0 0.011, which means that what it's suggesting is that there is a small fraction of the genetic diversity that we've observed in the populations is a, related to geography. Um, then when we look at, when we compare Big Island sites to Maui Nui, we have get five times that genetic distance between populations. So where we have this, a scale of probably about 1,500 kilometers or more, we have genetic differentiation, but it's subtle. Then we start comparing Big Island to Maui Nui, and we have get five times that genetic differentiation between populations. So where at one point we're thinking it's, it's just a matter of distance, you know, where at this scale you have genetic homogeneity, at this scale you do have some differentiation. Then though, you throw the Big Island into it, and you get these strong differences, and not simply a matter of genetic distance, of uh, geographic distance. So when we look at the, uh, our microsat data, and just remember that this is all preliminary, literally just off the presses within the past week, these analysis, we still have to proof our data, we have to check it for errors, we still have to run some other samples. But um, nonetheless, for this analysis, I've uh, compared global populations and then pairwise populations, and I'm only going to be talking about any of our tests that had a significance of a P of 0 0.01, that's actually an error there, which I feel comfortable discussing the tests that are significant at that level, considering the, the state of the data right now, and, and considering that we are hoping to apply these to conservation, these, this information to conservation strategies down the road. So when we look at the overall population structure using our 14 microsatellite loci, Again, we do see significant differences among sites. And if we start to then compare pairwise differences among sites in order to try to flesh out where these differences are, we again see that Johnston is, there are no differences between Johnston and this region in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. Whereas with the mitochondrial DNA, there was no differences between Johnston and any sites that we sampled. With the microsatellites, we have complete uh, we have no di genetic difference between these, this region, the, the central Northwest Hawaiian Islands, and Johnston, and then also the, uh, the northern Maine Hawaiian Islands. And it is only when you get further afield that you actually start seeing genetic differences between Johnston and any individual population. So what it looks like is that through the microsatellites, we are having a slightly better, we are refining our, uh, our re res better resolution of our genetic structure in regards to Johnston. And then we see the same thing again when it comes to just examining populations in the archipelago. We have, within this region, we have no significant genetic differences between populations. So we do have regular mixing of larvae within this region. And it is only if you step just a bit outside of that, as far as the distance, that you start seeing genetic differences among populations. And it's not specific to Kauai and Pearl and Herbie's, but more of a relation of this distance. So if you compare Kure to Maro, you do see a genetic difference among these populations. So it does look like it's more a matter of distance in this area than it is this area specifically being completely well mixed versus these other areas. 
So, but then when we get into the main Hawaiian Islands, if you remember with the mitochondrial DNA, we were pretty well mixed except for the big islands as a whole uh, being different from Maui Nui area. We have, within, with using the microsats, we see again pretty good mixing of, popula of sampled sites within the main Hawaiian Islands with the exception of uh, the Big Island, where our multiple sampling revealed population structure just on the scale of the Big Island. So we have genetic distance, we have significant differences among these populations that are simply, they're less than 50 kilometers apart. Like specifically, these two sites here are actually rather close. And then, so each of these sites is significantly, is genetically differentiated from the other sites. And then, if you, occur, if you examine Kona sites to Maui Nui, they are actually similar, but then they differentiate out from Hilo and South Point. So while we do, it does seem to be that distance is playing a factor, it appears to be working on different scales in different regions. So what's interesting is that through both the mitochondrial DNA and the microsatellites, we, do, uh, we are seeing genetic structure, but it seems to be working on different scales, where up in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, more or less greater than 1,000 kilometers, you, you have to go greater than 1,000 kilometers to see genetic differences among populations, including you know, Johnson Atoll, which was showing no difference whatsoever, or subtle differences between when you get further afield. But then when you get into the main islands, you start to see genetic differences among populations when you're comparing populations that are simply a matter of 200 kilometers apart. And then you get down to the big island, and as soon as we're comparing populations that are as close as 50 kilometers, we are getting genetic differentiation. <coughs> so it's, it's an interesting pattern that we have this, these, uh, it looks like genetic differentiation operating at completely different scales in different regions, suggesting that there might be other factors involved, including perhaps there is uh, habitat selection among the yellow tang, or perhaps there's something else going on. The, the complex oceanography of each area is maybe isolating populations or something of that sort. So currently what we're doing is we're still running quality control tests on all of our microsatellite data, uh, basically proofing it for errors and, and uh, determining its robustness. And then we are also, um, we still have to genotype multiple year classes that we've previously collected from Kona in order to examine the, for potential temporal genetic structure. Whereas what this would mean would be at a given site, you would examine one year or at, at multiple sites, you, you survey one year and you get a pattern of genetic structure. And then you come back five years, survey again, and you get a different pattern of genetic structure. And this, if this is happening, it would, would suggest that um, we have a, uh, more of a sweepstakes recruitment ha occurring within the islands where you have lucky individuals or lucky populations uh, at, uh, biasing reproduction on any given year. And then uh, as far as our wish list, we're, we'd like to improve our collections around the Big Island and see if there's a strong correlation between geography and the structure, the genetic structure that we're seeing. And, uh, and then also, uh, this summer, I would really like to get a hold of some uh, samples from within the lagoon and the barrier reef, all of the same year class uh, um, up on the atolls and see if there is a signature of uh, individuals selecting for lagoonal habitat versus barrier habitat. And uh, I'd just like to acknowledge everybody that supported the project and assisted with sample collection and lab assistance, including Lori in the back there, who was a big help in the lab running the samples. So thank you, and I'll take any questions.